Hi guys, it's Emily from The Minimalish Mama, and today I've got a whole bunch of fall cottagecore DIYs to show you. I'm linking up with the DIY mommy today and her fall DIY and decor challenge. So in the description down below, you'll find a playlist to a whole bunch more other inspiring videos. But to get on with this video, if you're not familiar with the decor style and term cottagecore, then I'm uh, I'm gonna insert some pictures here, but I would describe it as Anna Green Gables meets Little House on the Prairie with some more magic and whimsy thrown in. In my last video, you probably saw we went to the Dollar Tree and picked up some DIY supplies. We painted these pumpkins and we made this little string of fairy lights and added these leaves from the Dollar Tree to the lights, which were also from the Dollar Tree, just to add a little something special to it. And also you can buy those little mini clothespins at the Dollar Tree too. And then I got all of this greenery for making wreaths along with these pumpkins. So our first project is just going to be giving these little pumpkins a makeover. So I, we already painted them white using some white chalk paint and then I'm just going to pop off these plastic stems. I found some sticks in the backyard and I'm just breaking off some little pieces and I'm going to just hot glue that on to give it a more realistic looking stem. And these are all ready to decorate with. So next we're gonna move on to our first wreath. So I bought all of these ferns from Dollar Tree and I was pretty excited about them. But this wire is also from there and it was part of a sphere wreath, which I guess you're supposed to form into a ball. But I just broke apart the wires and I'm using one here for a more simple wreath. And then I'm taking apart some of the ferns, hot gluing them on, and I'm using a little bit of floral tape to cover some of the stems too and just help them stay on the wire. So I'm kind of make, going for an asymmetrical look and this will take a lot of hot glue <laughs> and tape until it looks right. Then it's time to add in your other stems. So these are called mini, the mini pomegranates and they are also from the Dollar Tree but I thought they kind of looked like nuts of some kind, like chestnuts or something. So I am adding those into the wreath too. Then I just glued some extra pieces of fern over where I had all the tape at the bottom. Finished tucking in the little mini pomegranates and then I'm going to add these clip-on pumpkins that we just made over and I hung it up on the wall just real quick to try to see how the leaves were falling and then you can kind of adjust as you need to and there you go we have our first project our fall cottage core wreath and I love how simple and minimalist it is and how easy it was to make Wreath number two is a little more involved. I'm using this metal wreath form from the Dollar Tree and all of these flowers and other stuff is from the Dollar Tree as well. But I really needed something to cover it. So I'm using actual real moss that Edison helped me gather from outside. And I'm, I don't really have enough to cover the whole thing. So I'm trying to spread it around and cover as much as I can. And I'm hoping it's gonna dry okay and not just crumble to pieces eventually. So far it seems to have held up fairly well, but it does still make some mess. So if you have any suggestions for that, let me know. 
And just like with the other wreath, we are hot gluing things on. One thing I wish I would have done that I didn't was to make sure all of these cattails were going the same direction so that you could hang the wreath up from any point and it would look good because everything would be going the same direction. So that is one tip as you are making your own. That's how this wreath turned out. So I really like the white mums and fairly neutral colors, the white and green. I think that looks really pretty. This project is one of my favorites. It is a butterfly cloche. So I got these butterfly stickers from the Dollar Tree and I already had some moss in this little green moss rock, but you actually can buy fake moss from the Dollar Tree too. So I wasn't crazy about the holographic background of these stickers in the underneath layer so I actually just cut the top part off so I just have the plastic upper layer and then I carefully trimmed around the edges of the butterfly to make it look a little bit more realistic and then I just hot glued it onto the stick and hot glued the stick onto the moss covered rock glued the moss rock down and that is it and it's very very simple but I really love it I feel like this one is totally the cottage core aesthetic. As is this next project that also involves more butterflies. For this next project, you're gonna need a shadow box. I have this shadows box from Ikea from a few years ago, but you might also be able to make this with just a picture frame from the Dollar Tree, but I haven't actually tried it. I am using these old book pages to create a background and you could also use scrapbook paper for this. So I'm just ripping the pages to fill the space, taping them together, and then I'm just going to pop on these butterflies. And I realized I could just easily peel them off of that bottom holographic layer. And for this I'm not bothering to trim off the plastic. I did try sticking a fern leaf in there and it was just over the top. So <laughs> I just secured that paper, the book pages to the back of the shadow box and then the butterflies sit inside. And I really love how simple and beautiful this is. Next up we have these velvet pumpkins and this is actually a DIY I made several years ago. But as you can see, it is a little worse for wear, so I'm going to give it a new stem and try to fix some of the issues here. But I'll link the original blog post in the description below so you can see how I first made them and got to this point. But now I'm going to tear off that old stem. I'm also going to fold up and hot glue the folds of the velvet to make a smaller hole. And then I'm just cutting some cinnamon sticks and I'm tucking those inside to be our new stem. I'm adding a little bit of moss to cover up the edge and some burlap twine. And then the moss also works as kind of a rustic looking leaf. And for our final project, I'm going to be giving these signs a makeover. So this sign I picked out from the Dollar Tree did not hold up very well. The first time we had any rain, it kind of fell apart. So I am going to be trying to make it over and still use it. So let's see how that turns out. But starting with the pumpkin one, I'm going to start by putting on a layer of white chalk paint. And I realized after putting on like three coats of paint, that the letters and design underneath were raised and so no matter how much paint I put in you could still kind of see the original text. So what I actually ended up doing eventually is flipping it over and then painting the back where it's nice and smooth and that worked much much better. After I gave both signs a fresh coat of white paint then I was ready to begin lettering on a new saying. So for this sign I'm just writing hello pumpkin and drawing a little pumpkin on that top half piece that I've re-glued on. I'm kind of going for the Ray Dunn text look.
And for my other sign, I picked a phrase in a script font that I'm just looking at my computer and trying to mimic. So originally it was going to say thankful, blessed, and pumpkin spice obsessed, but I didn't space the letters well enough. So I do recommend you kind of sketch them in first so you know where they're going to go to avoid that problem. But overall, I really like how that turned out. So I hope you enjoyed these fall cottage core DIY decor ideas. I hope it inspires you to do some DIYing of your own. I would love to see it. Be sure you tag me at the minimalist mama on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up to let me know and leave a comment down below and let me know, have you ever heard of cottage core before? And what do you think of this trend? Thanks so much, I'll see you next time.